So I'm currently standing here with an AR of 1726, and the buffs I have up are just my Wanderous Physic, Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and the weapon buff for my weapon's Ash of War. My friends, this is the Fire Knight's Greatsword, a new colossal sword introduced in Shadow of the Archery. I think this weapon might just be not only by far the best colossal sword in the game, but just straight up one of the best weapons in the game entirely. I will show you where to get the weapon and the Ash of War I am using on it later in the video, which will be timestamped. Fire Knight's Greatsword is a colossal sword with the fast attack speed of the Godslayer's Greatsword, allowing it to attack much faster than most other colossal swords, attacking much more alongside the speed of a regular Greatsword and not a colossal. And Fire Knight's Greatsword also has the incredible thrusting R2 heavy attack of the Zweihander, so that, alongside how fast its R1 light attacks come out, give it an absolutely phenomenal moveset. That in insane moveset Paired with the ludicrous attack rating you can get with it, they get an absolute DPS machine that almost feels like a mistake. And again, this is a colossal sword, so it has fantastic reach and poise damage alongside all of that. So, how on earth is this weapon's AR able to get so high? Fire Knight's Greatsword, as you would hope by the name, has innate fire damage and faith scaling, while still being able to put on Fire or Flame Affinity since it can have its Ash of War changed. And the added Fire damage you get from Fire or Flame Affinity does not replace the weapon's own innate Fire damage, it gets added on top, thus allowing the weapon to have the vast majority of its attack rating coming from Fire and not Physical. So if we look at my sword, I have an attack rating of 967, and 618 of that is coming from Fire damage and not Physical. And with the Ash of War I am using on the weapon, which I will talk about more about later, we can get an extra 95 flat fire damage added on top for 1073 AR with 713 of that being fire damage. Since that extra AR our Ash of War added was purely fire damage, that's going to be increased by all of our fire damage buffs as well. So because of that, we can use things that buff fire damage, such as the Fire Scorpion Charm and Flame Shrouding Tear, and the vast majority of our, our sword's damage is going to be increased by that, whereas it would be far less if the weapon's fire damage could not get this high. When given a Fire or Flame affinity, the Fire Knight's Great Sword just simply has an insane base damage that can be buffed extremely well. So you really want to use either Fire or Flame affinity, but which one should you use? I tested the weapon with both affinities, and I found that it gets its highest attack rating on a flame affinity with 80 faith, rather than a fire affinity with 80 strength. This seems to be caused by its innate faith scaling, causing flame affinity granted a B scaling in faith, whereas on fire it only has a C scaling in strength. I'll let my tests play out so you can see the damage. Keep in mind the sword is at plus 22 in these tests and not 25. And my talisman setup is also not fully optimized, so the damage could be even better. For some reason that I don't quite understand yet, my R1 light attacks seem to do a bit more damage on fire despite the lower AR, although the Ash of War itself did considerably less damage on fire. But overall, the two were pretty close, so in my opinion, that kinda just makes flame art just better, as it will allow you to add incantations into your build, giving you options in range and AoE. You can certainly still use the weapon on fire in a strength build, but if you're building specifically around this weapon, I would strongly advise going faith. Now let's talk about the Ash of War I'm using, because my god this thing is broken. This is the Ash of War Flame Skewer. It's essentially a combination of both a Giant Sunt and Flaming Strike, which in my opinion are two of the best Ashes of War in the entire game. Flame Skewer has that amazing po high poise damage upward thrust attack of the Giant Sunt, with a very fast follow up attack like Flaming Strike, which adds a fire weapon buff to your weapon for about 30 seconds, also just like Flaming Strike. It's honestly scary just how powerful this Ash of War is, and I think it is without question the best Ash of War for this weapon. There might be a better one that I haven't discovered yet but I can't imagine how anything could possibly be better than this. 
Now, just to quickly cover the full details of the build that I'm currently using for this weapon, I'm level 130 at the moment with 48 Vigor, 17 Mind, 25 Endurance, 18 Strength, 13 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, 70 Faith, and 9 Arcane. 70 Faith to hit the soft cap of 80 with the Faith Knot tier, 18 Strength and 13 Dex so I can meet the requirements to wield the weapon if I use the Radagon Sur Seal, 25 Endurance so I can both wear good armor and have enough stamina to do a good amount of attacks before running out, 48 Vigor because I'm still walking on getting it to 60, and 17 Mind to be able to cast the Ash of War a couple of times without needing Swig of Flask. For the armaments, I'm of course using the Fire Knight's Greatsword, and then in my left hand, the Giant Seal. I'm using this specific seal because since I'm using a fire damage weapon, it makes sense to cast fire incantations, and the fire giant ones, such as Giant's Flame Take Fee, are phenomenal. There is a new school of fire incantations called the Mesmer Fire Incantations, which might be better than the fire giant ones and more fitting, but I haven't found them yet, so I'm not certain. For my armor, I'm using the Crucible Knight set because the stats on it are great and the set looks badass. Talismans, I'm currently using Radagon Star Seal to meet the weapon requirements. Great Jaws Arsenal to wear the heavy armor without needing an insane amount of endurance. Fire Scorpion Jump because it makes me do a lot more damage. And Dragon Crest Shield plus 2 to mitigate the extra damage taken by using the Star Seal and Scorpion Charm. This isn't actually the ideal talisman setup for this build though. I would actually recommend using Fire Scorpion Charm, Shard of Alexander, Dragon Crest Great Shield, and the new Two-Handed Sword Talisman, which buffs your attacks with a two-handed weapon by 15%. I just don't have those talismans on this character yet. Now lastly, I will now show you how to get both the Ash of War and the weapon. The sword has a chance to drop from the Fire Knights that wield it. The best spot to farm it that I found is from the Star House, First Floor Side of Grace. So from there, go down the elevator and there's a knight at the bottom that can drop it. He is pretty strong, so make sure you cast all of your buffs while you are going down the elevator. If the knight doesn't drop the sword, go back up the elevator, rest at the side of the grace, and repeat this cycle until you get it. I personally got it on my third kill, so it might have a good drop rate, but I'm not certain on that. As for the Ash of War, to get it, there is an NPC that invades you at two different locations, you have to defeat him at each location, and after you defeat him at both, he'll drop it. The first location is going to be just a short way from the small private altar side of Grace. The second will be at the Church of Crusade. I'll play out me going to each location so you can see how to get there. And with that, that's everything I have to say. If you found today's video helpful or entertaining at all, please be sure to give a like and subscribe.